all right so let's continue from here i said it's an overcount if you don't understand it, it's not a big deal but i mean it's it's a little bit more subtle i'm trying to explain it in a very simple way it's a little bit more subtle so here again sum of three columns okay and so on till what do you have to add okay in a very simple way if i want to don't want to worry about overcounting and all that i'll add till d minus 2 why d minus 2 d minus 1 is okay okay combination of d minus 1 sums can be added that if i add d minus 1 columns and if i get some column and that can be added okay it's not a big deal i'll, I'll still get a minimum distance t okay this should be what greater than or equal to what 2 power r if this if this condition is satisfied i can definitely add the nth column also okay so i have i have written this only for n this needs to be valid for i equals 1 2 3 so on till n oh yeah less than or equal to i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, it's less than or equal to 2 power r okay so this is the bound okay so this is called the gilbert washroom bound it's as i said very famous and it will it will it will seem to be poor for small n and small d and all that but when you go to large n and large k it it tends to become quite exact okay so when people have shown after a lot of research some slightly non trivial asymptotic deviation and in general making this bound better for large n and large k is as I said one of those I think there is a $500 or a $1500 price tag to that problem. If you solve that you will automatically get that money from somewhere. Okay, So it's 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 a problem of value also. Okay, Literally. Okay, So let's take this example and try to apply it. Okay, What did we have? We had n equals 31 and d equals 4. What does this tell me r should be greater than or equal to? Let me see. GV bound will tell me seven really. Let me see. D is just 4, right? So you'll have 1 plus 30 plus what? 30 choose 2, right? What is 30 choose 2? 30 choose 2 should be some 400 something. No? 430 something. 435. You add that to these two, you'll get 466. So this tells me R should be greater than or equal to 9 at least, right? Which means what? K is less than or equal to what? 23. So, does this violate our previous const construction? No. 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 Yeah, see again, don't interpret this as a bound, okay? Just gave you that long warning and don't go ahead interpreting this as a bound, okay? This is only a existence result which works for this k and this n and this d, okay? You can handsomely violate it for small n and small k like I showed you just now, okay? What, does our, what did our construction tell us? 31, 25, 4 is possible okay well you might not consider 2 to be a handsome violation but it is still a violation right it's possible to get it get to get better k than this but as i said if you can show that you can always get something better than this better than the gv bound for large k and large n then that's a very non trivial result making this better making this summation very accurate is a highly non trivial problem okay all right so that's the gv bound <coughs> we'll stop with bounds here okay stop with bounds here i want to take this time moment to recap a little bit about what we did because we're going to jump into the d equals 5 type designs which involve finite fields okay so drastically different area so before we go there <coughs> let's take stock of what are all the various things that you have learned okay right let's hope that you've learned all of that okay so we've been talking about binary linear codes okay this is recap Okay, so the first question that some of you may ask, I don't know, maybe some of you asked, maybe some of you didn't ask, why linear? Okay, why not non-linear? Why do I insist that add of sum of any two code words should be another code word? What's the what's the objective there? I mean, why do we want linear? Okay, so you can justify it using various things. One way I justified it was I said there are simple encoders, right? I told you there are simple encoders, simple decoders for these things. 
simple way of thinking about it nice structure is useful but are we losing anything okay all these bounds do they apply for non linear codes in fact it turns out they do also okay so all these bounds also apply for non linear codes okay and i have also shown you yeah you can prove that also this another argument <coughs> okay so so since all these bounds also apply and since many linear codes have also been constructed to meet these bounds one can argue that if minimum distance is your criteria then linear could be as good as non linear okay there's also another argument for linear codes it comes from information theory in many things you can in many actual channels you can show that linear codes are good enough for achieving what's called capacity okay so that's good so you don't lose much by doing linear codes okay so that's one of the things so linear codes you can accept okay and the next things i want to convey are the notions of block length dimension and minimum distance okay these three should be very very clear in your mind dimension and block length might sound very trivial to you but when you play around with the code puncture it extend it shorten it these things also change and you should have a very good idea of what they are okay because they are the bread and butter if you don't know them there's no way you can do encoding and decoding okay and minimum distance which is one would agree at this point is the most crucial of all the three parameters right right but we also saw bounds that relate all these three okay so <clears throat> so the, what else did you learn okay decoding right encoding and decoding we really didn't concentrate too much on encoding what did i say for encoding simply do m times g is what i said okay suppose you were to take stock and count the number of operations it requires for doing m times g okay suppose you were to do it okay it might seem like it can get a little bit unwieldy for instance if if g is a very large matrix okay it's a 500 by 1000 matrix okay for instance then you need to store a 500 by 500 matrix right for doing this multiplication right it could be some non trivial random matrix and you have to store it okay if you have some experience with vlsi and all that storing such large matrices with being able to access it in some way can be a little bit non trivial okay so it's not the easiest thing in the world okay while encoding is conceptually simple to describe it would be nice to have it simpler than this okay maybe a simple vlsi structure or something some digital structure which will encode matrices for you okay or at least g should be g should have some nice properties it should it should have some nice properties okay it should be for instance sparse you know i mean if it's sparse it's not too scary okay you can do all that encoding as i said it's, it's easy to understand but it's not fully solved if you want to insist on easy implementation okay so that's one thing and decoding we have left it to be we have left it quite open okay so the only thing i did was syndrome decoding which i said very clearly cannot be cannot be done easily for large n and large k okay the table that i built if n minus k is 500 you can't build that table okay so you have to do it online and doing it online solving that equation is s equals h times e transpose doing it online can take a lot of computation okay so solving this is the ma major problem finding the minimum weight solution of this can you find the minimum weight solution for this very quickly if you can do that then you have solved the kind of solved the decoding problem also <clears throat> okay so this is roughly where we are as far as uh, reading up and when as far as knowing what the area is about okay so this is what we have seen so far okay but one thing i have not really motivated very clearly is the need to go to large n and large k okay why is it that we need to go to large n and large k it turns out the trade off between k by n versus d by n becomes better for large n and large k okay so that's the that's the best best uh, argument i can give right now okay it turns out to be better that's one thing other thing is in practical packet communication systems it good to it's good to have a large packet okay if you have a lot of small packets if you're familiar with these uh, layers and multiple overheads each layer will come in and add its own overhead if you have a packet of length 30 bits <clears throat> and if for each packet you have to add like 100 bits of overhead it makes no sense okay so you lose a lot of uh, a lot of uh, rate that way okay you don't want to do that okay so it's good to have large packets so that adding these overheads like for instance something called crc is always added to packets right? so adding crc should not increase your rate decrease your rate too much so it's good to have large packets okay so for various arguments like that k by k and n have to be large okay 
and when things become large like that we don't know anything right we cannot do anything right now we cannot construct codes right when n increases d has to be larger we cannot construct codes we cannot encode them we cannot decode them okay so what we'll study next starting with finite fields is a way to solve all those problems okay and reed solomon codes provide a solution to all these problems wonderfully okay beginning from the very practical to the very theoretical they give you <coughs> a wonderful solution in fact reed solomon codes as i mentioned are mds codes okay but to really get to that you have to be very patient okay <laughs> You have to learn a lot of other mathematics behind it and follow follow up a lot on those things and then finally read about the solomon codes okay so that's where we are pro proceeding from now on <coughs> so about 15 more minutes i don't want to waste this time so i'll start off with some very simple finite fields and then we'll uh, keep going okay that's the next thing i'm going to say okay so as i said one way of thinking about the need for all this is to construct codes with larger d okay d d equals 5 or larger right now we don't know a very nice way of constructing okay one of the most elegant and wonderful ways of constructing codes with minimum distance 5 or larger <coughs> is through the use of what's called a vandermonde matrix how many of you know what a vandermonde matrix is okay so this vandermonde matrix you must have seen this sometime okay it's a very simple matrix it plays a central low role in all these constructions okay and you also need to know about finite fields you need this matrix with entries coming from what's called a finite field okay so these two things together will give you the answer to all the constructions you need okay so it's a very simple idea <coughs> the idea is not very great but you need to know the finite field mathematics to get over it okay so we're going to do about a little bit about finite fields <coughs> okay so the first question you might ask is what is a field okay so in mathematics a field is a set of elements on which certain things you can do okay a set of elements <coughs> that can be okay i'll give a very loose definition we'll make it precise later okay that can be two things you can do to them you can add added and subtracted multiplied and divided okay it's a very loose uh, informal definition i don't want to be very exact at this point just to give you a motivation do you know set of elements on which all this can be done okay can when i say done i mean you can, can do it but you should do it consistently you can't you can't say all kinds of things be a simple rule of defining it just just you cannot just come up with all kinds of things okay so I, i'll define all that very precisely later but i want to simply motivate initially to get you the idea okay what is one set of elements on which you can do all these things okay everybody says real numbers as if you know the real numbers very well okay real numbers are one of the most nasty fields out there okay let's not go into such fields okay mo mo something much simpler than that i'm sorry rational numbers okay a much nicer set of numbers which i know very well okay rational numbers are one of the first examples which you think of why am i not thinking of integers okay yeah so if you divide two integers you don't necessarily get an integer right so that's a problem so i'm not i don't want to think of integers or even say natural numbers 1 2 3 4 yeah, subtraction is a problem right so you don't want to do all this so if you want to do all this you see the smallest thing i have to go to is at least the rational numbers okay so rational numbers and then yeah real numbers also are good enough okay so here are examples okay so typical notation for rational numbers is q So have real numbers. What is so bad? It's so bad. Uh, <coughs> so the problem is you guys don't learn real numbers properly. If you learn it properly, then it becomes very bad. If you accept real numbers, then it's good. There's no problem. If you know, if you think you know real numbers, then you're you're doing fine. You don't need <laughs> you don't need to know anything else. Okay? If you have to really really know, then it becomes a problem. Okay. so these are two examples but i'll give you a very simple example okay and then i'll tell you how to add subtract and all that it sound simplest thing in the world but it can work for instance i'll i'll write down what i will call f2 okay so i'll simply say i'll just take a set <coughs> two entries 0 and 1 okay then i'll tell you how to add subtract multiply divide okay it's very easy okay division by 0 i will not expect okay it's not reasonable to expect division by 0 so i'll say division by 0 is excluded but can you easily figure out how to add multiply subtract do everything modulo 2 it will work okay 
everything is modular 2 it will work okay how will you add 1 to 1 that's the only non trivial addition if you do 1 plus 1 it will be 0 okay so you see <coughs> if you contrast this with the real numbers it's a completely different type of definition right so you can have very small very nice fields you can also have very large very nasty fields okay so in coding we are mostly related concerned about finite fields when i say finite i mean the set has to be finite it has to have a finite number of elements okay so this is a finite field okay these two clearly are not finite okay real numbers and rational numbers are not finite Okay, so it's possible to extend this F2. F2 is a very simple example. Okay, you can also make it slightly more non-trivial. Like you pointed out, you can take F3, which would be 0, 1, 2, and do addition and multiplication modulo 3. This will be a field. You'll see it will be consistent. You do anything modulo 3, you can also divide. How will I divide 1 by 2 mod, t, mod, mod 3? Okay, you have to think about it in a little different fashion. Okay. See, it's, it's good to think of division as the inverse of multiplication, right? So, you always think of it that way. When you divide 1 by 2, you want to divide 1 by the other. <coughs> the way to think about it is, it's easy usually to define 2 power minus 1. Okay, so the way you have to think about 1 by 2 is, for instance, how do you do 1 by 2? You have to think of it as 1 times 2 power minus 1. What's 2 power minus 1? Okay, I have to define this 2 power minus 1, right? I will define it later. Okay, So, you will see I will define it later. This is how I will define multiplication. This is how I will define division. Okay, Right now it is not very clear. We will come to it soon enough. What about subtraction? What is 1 minus 2? Okay, So, I want to think of it as minus 1. But minus 1 is the same as what? Modulo 3. 2. Right? So, you have to generalize these notions. Okay, So, that is what I want to convey. This notion that you are used to for what is addition, what is multiplication, what is division, what is subtraction will have to be generalized little bit. You will have to take it to its very basic essential core. What is it that I do when I subtract two numbers? Okay. What is it that I do when I divide two numbers? What is it that I do when I multiply two numbers? You should do, you should think about all that very carefully and we will generalize it based on that. Okay. So, it will involve a lot of what is called abstract mathematics. Okay. So, uh, very often people are not very comfortable with it. Okay. When, when I write down plus and when I write down dot and do that, it can be disturbing to you. You will never know what this is. It will seem very abstract. It will seem like addition, division, multiplication. Okay? It is a long way to reach Solomon codes from here. So, okay? There will be lots of times when you will be completely lost. Okay? I want you, to, want you to keep trying. Okay? Eventually, you will get used to the notion of finite fields. And it takes time. Okay? It is not very easy to learn. But we will try to go, I will try to go as slow as I can. Okay? So, I will try my best to go as slow as uh, possible. <coughs> okay? So, the next 10 minutes or so, I am going to spend giving you some motivation for why such kind of abstractness is something you have seen before. Okay, So, you might think, you might say, I have never seen abstract mathematics. I only work with real numbers, no, real numbers, numbers that are real. Okay, So, it is not <coughs> it's not like that. Okay? It has always been an abstract idea. A lot, a lot of things have been abstract. It is just that you learn it in a very different way. You learn from your young age. So, you think it is all very real. Okay, It can be very abstract. So, if you think of it historically, okay, so if you want some historical background, Okay. So, people typically think of the whole numbers or n as I call it, the natural numbers as being the first numbers that you would have come across. Okay. So, these natural numbers are used for counting, right? What are the natural numbers that you had? 1, 2, 3, so on. Okay. Okay. Then maybe the whole numbers came in. Okay. So, what are the whole numbers? You would include 0 into them. Okay. So, maybe I put in a 0 here. Okay. The necessity for 0 is also interesting. Once 0 comes in, right suddenly you needed negative numbers okay so there is a big abstraction okay somehow it seems very clear to you what minus 2 is but what is minus 2 what is minus 2 can you can you add minus 2 can there be minus 2 things no it's it's not it's not real at all right it's very abstract and this is one of those things that you learn very early on so it seems very comfortable to you okay that you can write down this long list of numbers and assume you know what it means right what are these things it is an abstract idea. How do I define minus 2? What is the actual core essential definition of minus 2? Yeah, that which I add to 2 to make 0. Okay, There is no number in n which when added to 2 will give me 0. Do you agree? 
So what do I do? I invent a number and I say I will call it minus 2 that when added to 2 becomes 0 okay? and I make my list of numbers larger. Okay? So now I get consistency for subtraction. Okay? It, was an, it was a very exceptionally abstract idea okay? but it seems very real to you because <coughs> you are used to it number 1 and the other thing is there is this wonderful relationship you can make between what is called the number line and this. Okay? So most people are very comfortable with measurements. Okay? You know you start at some point, use a ruler and measure. What if you have to measure in reverse? So you say minus in that way. Right? You learn that in physics and it becomes very comfortable to you because you measure and measurement is always the most easiest thing to do. That is how whole of math also got started. Right? People wanted to measure things very correctly. Okay? So on the number line, negative numbers make a lot of significance and you can associate that with measurement which is a very natural intuitive process which people understand very well. So it seems very real to you mostly because of the measurement. Okay, because you always associate minus with you are an axis, you are the origin, you are going negative. Okay. We will go to number systems where you will not have such things, you will not have measurement, you will not have axis, you will not have the origin. So, and so naturally you will be lost. Okay. <laughs> so it is not it is not unnatural to be lost. Okay. But you have to be you have to you have to remember that the ideas are essentially the same. Okay. The ideas are essentially the same. I defined addition in a certain way, okay, and then I have zero. Then I have to come up with some number which when added to this number will give me 0. right? That is the negative of that number. right? My operation has to allow for that. Okay? So you will see we will cook up some, some examples like that. The way it works will be like that. Okay? So the number line is very interesting. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, so on. Okay? And I want to harp on this measurement a little bit. Why do you think the rational numbers came by? Why do you need rational numbers? If you are only measuring. <coughs> Yeah, that is an abstract way of thinking about it. Let us think in terms of measurement. Why do we need rational numbers? Now? What is between these questions? Yeah, exactly. So if you fix your unit, okay, right, it is not good to keep changing units all the time. And how many units will you change? You can't keep on changing units, right? One ninth of something, one eighth of something, it cannot be a different unit, okay. So you can't keep changing units. At some point you have to stop. I'll say I'll fix my unit, and anything between 0 and 1 in this unit will be denoted 1 by how many ever it is less. Okay. So, at that point you freeze your unit and you say I have rational numbers. Okay. Now you have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You need to do all that, right? Once you have units and measurements, you have to be able to add, you have to be able to subtract, right? When you, when you actually construct something, all this comes up. Okay. So, you can think of rational numbers on this line. Okay. Right? Fractional things. You fix a unit and you want to measure, you, you naturally led to rational numbers and it seems very con and very nice. Okay. You have also been told you can think of the real numbers on this line. Many of you are probably very convinced that you can see root 2 on this line. Okay? It is very difficult to see root 2 on the line. Okay? So where you will actually meet root 2 is when you can want to construct a right angle. It is possible to construct a right angle. right? You can construct a right angle. You construct 1 here, 1 here. Where will you meet root 2? On the hypotenuse, you will meet root 2. Okay? So early Greek mathematicians did a lot of work and how many other people did a lot of work on this? There was no common unit on which both the sides of the right angle triangle and the hypotenuse could all become rational. They could never find it. They could never come up with a nice unit on which it could happen. Okay. You see the problem here? Right? There was no unit. How many ever how much ever smaller you make it? This number keep on kept on changing. So they need so you naturally need a new number for it. So you come up with irrational numbers, right? Numbers that will have non-repeating, non-recurring decimal places, right? That keep on coming, right? You can't do anything about it. Okay, so that's where you meet root two. Okay, imagine how abstract root two is. Okay, otherwise, okay, if you did not have this measurement, how abstract would root two be? Okay, just put this weird notation and put two inside it, and suddenly you imagine you square that number, you get a rational number which is two. Okay, you imagine that. Okay, it's 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 completely in your head, right? But somehow it has been bought into the measurement regime by this right angle triangle. Okay, the hypotenuse becomes root two, and it becomes so clear to you, right? You might have in reality, as it, in in, in uh, coding, you'll have situations where you cannot do this visualization. You won't have the right angle triangle, but still you should be able to visualize the root two, which when squared gives you something that you know already. Okay, so that's the next thing. Okay. 
there is also another construction where these numbers will show up okay so if you were to construct a circle and if you make this say the diameter some rational number say 2 2 is not very right i'll make it 1 okay okay you'll meet another interesting irrational number here okay so this length along the circle will be what pi okay which is a more crazy number than root 2 okay at least root 2 you can imagine as you square it you get a rational number okay there's nothing like that for pi okay pi is called a transcendental real number right there's no polynomial equation that it satisfies okay it's a crazy real number okay in fact real numbers are one of the craziest number systems out there okay so to construct that and actually fully show where this number is on the line how to think about it how to add how to subtract takes a lot of advanced analysis okay so you think you know it because all these number systems help you but there are very few people in the world who know really how real numbers behave okay so it's not a very easy thing to think about real numbers are more crazy than you want than, than you might believe okay <coughs> yeah that's one that's one part of it okay it's one part of it we'll go ahead and use more abstraction than this we'll use a lot of abstractions in fact i won't say i'll, I'll talk about alphas and betas and gammas we won't have anything to do with reality okay but i'll tell you some very surprising powerful properties about finite fields okay not just finite fields using abstract fields okay if you don't believe me using the notion of abstract fields you can show some wonderful wonderful properties for instance ruler and compass construction okay i don't know if you remember you cannot trisect an angle right it's a very famous theorem okay you cannot trisect an angle using ruler and compass what else can you not do using ruler and compass yeah some square to circle type things you cannot do these things any times you have root to some non trivial construction you cannot do it with ruler and compass you know how you prove that one of the most wonderful and elegant ways of proving that is using abstract fields fields with no relation to reality you might say okay but at the end of the day they come back and tell you what is possible on a construction okay so there is so there is a inherent beauty to it and it will come back and help you later okay same thing happens with the finite fields that we we'll learn it will seem like we are learning about something that's not at all useful but you'll use this wonderful random on matrix and come back into codes and this parity check matrix and the rank criteria and this distance criteria and it will be a beautiful connection okay i hope you enjoy that connection okay as much as i enjoyed it when i learned it and hopefully we'll we'll see that at the end there are more things you can show using abstract fields okay that is one thing okay the construction ruler compass construction and then there is one more result about uh, okay actually this and that are related the other result is uh, solutions for polynomial equations okay what do you know about solutions for polynomial equations for quadratic <coughs> you know the exact solution for cubic and degree 4 also it turns out one can write expressions from degree 5 you can show there does not exist any expression involving roots and all that okay which is a very non trivial thing to show how do you show that you show that using abstract fields okay so so i want you to remember these things okay and if you are intrigued by all these things go read more about what these number systems are what fields are what does it mean if you are intrigued about it and we will see only a very small aspect of it i'll highlight it only with respect to coding i won't i won't do a general discussion definitely not okay but i want you to keep track of that and see that beauty finally when you finally come back through random on matrix into the into the actual code construction you'll see it beautifully fits okay thanks